Yeah, this is Jumping Jack Frost. You're watching No Requests on Beatnik TV. Yeah, peace. Hello. Hello. We're off to give another DJ another of our No Request t-shirts and today it's an absolute legend of the jungle scene, Jumping Jack Frost. Someone I've looked up to for years so I'm excited to hear what he's got to say. I think we're going to go meet him at My Soul Radio, Me Soul, Ra My Soul Radio, Me Soul Radio, a radio station down the road. Should be good. Let's go. So I'm currently down in Deptford and I'm heading to meet Jumping Jack Frost to give him his No Request t-shirt. Got to meet DJ Nikki somewhere along here. I think she'll probably be just down the road at some point. Probably a bit late. I'm a little bit early. And we're gonna go meet Jumping Jack Frost and give him his No Request t-shirt. Hi. All right. We're in the deepest, darkest South London near where we live. We have no idea if we're in the right place or not. I'm so tired, I've got crazy jet lag. I've been up for like so long now. This is our second interview of the day and it's with the ledge that is Jumping Jack Frost, one of the founders of Drum and Bass and Jungle. Ah, it's like a breath of fresh air. Just, I think I've always been a DJ because ever since I was a kid, I always played records at my cousin's like parties and stuff like that. And I just always wanted to know what record this was or what record that was. And I just like started, do you know what I mean? Messing about with records. And then I just started trying to learn to blend them. And when the whole mixing thing came out, I just became fascinated with it. And um, yeah, it's just been an ongoing problem, <laughs> as my parents would say. <laughs> I played drum and bass, I played jungle, drum and bass. I started off playing that funk and um, break beats and like hip hop and rare groove. And then I, then I moved into acid house, do you know what I mean? When the acid house came out, it just kind of took me, I just got caught up in the wave of it. You know what I mean? I was working at a pirate station, I just like changed, just turned everything upside down, acid house, acid house, acid house. And I just went from there to that hardcore, hardcore to like, you know, jungle, rave vibe. Then, it just was, then the jungle thing just came so specialist. And, you know what I mean? And the jungle involved to drum and bass. And you know what I mean? And I, I just played right across the board for anything to do with drum and bass. I've been DJing since I was about, like properly, I think, I think I've been DJing since I was about 18. You know what I mean? So it was a long time, do you know what I'm saying? Say, maybe 30 years, 30 years, do you know what I mean? 30 years man so it's been a long long time and I mean I've gone through all different kind of genres experienced all kind of things and you know what I mean it's just been it's been a hell of a ride man but I've been doing it for a long time <laughs> started off making tunes with a label called Formation just done some you know just like some hardcore stuff and just like kind of learning learning the kind of the my rocks Rocks in the studio without producing. I'm a terrible, I can't engineer. I just could just sit there and tell someone what to do. Do you know what I mean? And hope that they kind of translate it the way that, that it is in my brain. And more often than not, we kind of meet each other halfway. But um, I've, you know, I really got into it and then I, then I started just doing some other stuff. And then I made this record called um, The Viticus the Burial, which is probably what I'm best known for. And um, from there, you know, I just started doing a lot of remixes. I remixed for Jamaraquai, um, Dry as a Bone, Cap Coffee, 
um, bunch of like jungle, German based tunes of remixed. And yeah, but I don't look at myself as a producer. I think I just, I haven't got the patience for it. Sitting in there and keep going like, where was we yesterday? Like for me, it's all got to be done in one day. I don't feel, you know I mean? I don't feel the same way as I did today. I don't feel the same way tomorrow. So when I go in the studio, I say, what the f is this? Do you know what I mean? Because well, I don't think yeah, we done it yesterday. I'm like, really? Oh, I and then I just want to start again. That's what's telling my life. Do you know what I'm saying? So I often get it, I get it right sometimes, but I often get it wrong. I DJ all over the world, man. I've got no, there's no set place. Do you know what I mean? I'm fortunate enough to be um, able to play at, so, I'm fortunate enough to have played at probably every major club in the world. Do you know what I mean? Um, and um, you know, I'm pretty fortunate enough to still be able to do it. So I DJ all over the world, like every country, everywhere there's a scene, I've been there at some point. And um, they're still trying to, just still trying to get me, get me to them as well. I'm really lucky about it. I'm really fortunate. If you want to be, as a young person, what is to be a DJ or producer, the best thing, advice I can give you is to just really stick to what, what you love. Don't follow trends or whatever. Just, just say, this is me and this is what I'm going to do. And don't let anyone tell you you can't do it or try to put you off or, or knock your goals. You have to be, you have to have really thick skin to be in this business as well. You have to just really be single-minded and say, I'm gonna do this and stick to it. Don't let anyone knock you off. <laughs> Number one has gotta be, I was, cause I was the first DJ to DJ to play to Protestant and, uh, and Catholic kids in Northern Ireland. And this is at the time of the, of the, when it was really the real deep troubles. And I was, you know what I mean? It was like such a blessing to be able to kind of bring these two, these two sets of people together. In, and, and everyone dance and have a good time and leave all the troubles of politics and all that behind. And so, so, yeah, I just want that's the only thing I want to mention because it's something that I'll, I'll always take with me, do you know what I mean? Because it's such a more monumental, monumental thing, do you know what I'm saying? Because of the, the, the troubles at the time in Northern Ireland and it's, that place has got a special place in my heart, so I think I'll just list that. <laughs> A couple of years ago, a girl came up to me in a party, tapped me on the shoulder when I was in a mix and I turned and I was like, what? She was like, can you play some Britney? I was like, really? And she, uh, someone's got, someone took a photograph and captured my face when I was looking at her. I was like, really? And she was dead serious, I couldn't believe it, do you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Fortunately, that's not for me, do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's the, flash, that's the most bizarre one. <laughs> yeah, my book. Big Bang Heavy, so basically it's an autobiography about my life from when I was a kid all the way up to now really, do you know what I mean? And uh, it's just basically just like a, a real honest, gritty story about my life which has been properly kind of, it's, it's been some twists and turns and it's been pretty eventful to say the least. You know, this is just my, this is my story from my angle and it's, it's quite gritty. <laughs> Website www.team-frost.com. My Instagram is at DJJJFrost. My Twitter is at DJJJFrost. Facebook, you can get me on Facebook. And I don't do Snapchat, I'm not into the ears and all that kind of stuff. <laughs>
Yeah, my light's dead. I need to order a new one. Like that. There we go. <laughs> oh, yay, rave light. That was wicked. Uh, what a legend. Great yeah, interview. So fun, so fun. My car's here. Oh, sugar, okay. Good yeah, work. That was a great interview with Jumping Jack Frost. What a ledge. Yeah. So much fun. Like, the thing is about those old school DJs is they're all proper characters. <laughs> so funny. And they've all got serious stories as yeah, well. Yeah, the best stories. Lots that we couldn't put on camera, but check out his book for some of them. That man there made one of my all time. I wish this thing would stop making nah, noise. because I'm sitting in it. Yeah, so Leviticus, I didn't tell him, but I'm a fan, is like my favourite drum and bass record yeah. of all time. It's I did amazing. tell him. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. I was like, that was, that was the best tune ever. I was even going into the fact that Optical like, produced the B-side and Dillinger engineered the A-side and he was like, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Geek times. <laughs> right. Okay, Thanks, off home. Sweet. Good night. Let's go. Subscribe, 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 subscribe